Hello everyone, this is Merit Trainboy speaking, and welcome to the video where I will be answering all of your questions that have been submitted to me on my Q&A announcement video. Before I, before I posted a closing comment on that video, I have received about around 23 comments, although I was kind of expecting more than that. But overall, some of the comments that I have received contain about several questions, and I will be attempting to answer all of them. To make this simple, I have placed every single question into each different category of what they are related to. Although, some of you people may remember that a while back on my community tab, I have explained what uh, the row of categories were originally going to be like. But because I didn't get any questions which are related to some of the categories, I then ended up with this row of categories. Nevertheless, I will be answering each question in each category in separate videos. And to make this Q&A more interesting, I will also be featuring some pictures and video. However, some of them will be featured while I'm answering some of the questions as we go along. Just to let you know about that. So without further ado, let's get started. And in this first part of the Q&A, I will be answering the questions which are related to the official Thomas and Friends series. The first question was asked by O-Face Productions. What got you into Thomas? Well, that was pretty a long time ago, you see. Back then when I was in preschool and I was really young, we were playing around in the room until our preschool teacher brought out a TV and when she put a Thomas VHS tape into the player, we began to watch it. And that Thomas VHS tape in particular contains several episodes from the first season. And that was called Thomas Gets Tricked and Other Stories. So you see, those episodes from that VHS tape were my first Thomas and Friends episodes that I have ever watched. And I started to get really keen into the show because of the talking trains and scenery and the different stories that it talks about. And really I was starting to fall in love in the show and I had got a Thomas PC computer game which was Trouble on the Tracks. And I even got some Thomas and Friends merchandises. Most of them was Wooden Railway and a few was Tomy. And I even started getting some Thomas video releases uh, ever since I started uh, to get into the show uh, because we were watching uh, Thomas episodes in preschool and now I could s watch some more Thomas episodes at home. And the first Thomas VHS tape that I have ever got was Thomas Comes to Breakfast, you see. And very often back then, I've been getting a new Thomas and Friends VHS video along with a new Thomas toy, mostly Wooden Railway. And yeah, that's how I got into Thomas. And then uh, a while later, I took a break and then sometime later, I was interested into the show again after I got a new uh, Thomas DVD for Christmas, which was called Thomas's Snowy Surprise. And uh, those episodes uh, from that DVD I have never seen before back then when I was still into the show. And that's when I thought I should see uh, some more of those episodes that I have not yet seen. But overall, that's how I got into Thomas and Friends, and it's been around uh, through uh, all my life. But yeah, that's how I got into the show. Now, the next question was asked by a few users. What is your favorite Thomas and Friends episode? Well, that's kind of a difficult question to answer. There has been just so many great episodes lately. I think my uh, favorite episode that I've enjoyed most of the time would have to be somewhere 
between seasons 1 to 5 or from season 8 or from seasons 17 to uh, 20th I don't really know exactly but overall I guess uh, the Thomas episodes that I've been enjoying most of the time would have to be uh, Thomas comes to breakfast Thomas gets bumped Thomas Percy and the dragon trust Thomas the trouble with mud cranky bugs a better view for Gordon and there's also uh, Thomas to the rescue and uh, too hot for Thomas and probably uh, Gordon takes charge and there's Edward and the male hide and peep and save you and don't go back playtime snow tracks Oh, the dignity and uh, Gordon runs dry and uh, probably the afternoon tea express and uh, Thomas and the emergency cable and maybe uh, Timothy and the rainbow car and uh, helping hero that's a pretty much about Thomas episodes that I could name of there is just so many great episodes that we can enjoy so I suppose that uh, a few episodes that I have mentioned before will have to be uh, my favorites but yeah like I said there's just so many great Thomas episodes out there and sometimes it's kind of hard to pick which one of them you have enjoyed it the most. Who is your favorite Thomas and Friends character? Well, I actually have a few uh, favorite Thomas characters like there's Thomas, I like the shape of his tanks and I love how his whistle looks and he even has a lamp at the front of him and he always has that lamp uh, that is always placed on the front of him for some reason. And I even like his theme, which was as a part of the old uh, Thomas theme music. And uh, there's Percy. I like the red stripes around his boiler. Uh, I like his uh, chirpy attitude. I like his theme a lot. And there's also James. I like his red paint. I like his brass dome. I like the shape of his whistle. And I even enjoy his uh, jazzy uh, theme. And there's also Gordon. I like how uh, his boiler looks. And I like the number four on his tender looks. And I even like how his buffers look. And there's even Toby. And I like that he's got a bell instead of a whistle. And... Uh, his uh, body is made of wood and I even like that he has uh, a lamp above his face and there's also Diesel who is uh, kind of another one of my favorites it's just that he's a uh, black all over and there's uh, Mavis I like that uh, pointy uh, funnel at the front and I even like the yellow and black stripes around her face and if I can think of any non-rail Thomas characters it will have to be uh, Birdie the bus and uh, Harold the helicopter and if I also have to think of uh, a few favorites from the narrow gauge uh, railway then it'll have to be a uh, Scarlowy and uh, there's uh, Sir Handel, and uh, there's even a Peter Sam, and the reason why I like him is because he's got a uh, squared shape funnel, and you know the story behind that. And uh, there's even Duncan. I like his uh, rock and rolling uh, attitude, although he would show that attitude at uh, some point. And that's pretty much of uh, the Thomas characters that I could think 
that are my favorites. There are still a lot of good uh, characters uh, that you can think of, but the characters that I have mentioned are my favorites. And if I have to pick uh, my most favorite characters, then it'll have to be uh, Thomas, James, Gordon, and I guess Mavis. What is your favorite Thomas and Friends season? Well, to be honest here, it's kind of hard for me to choose one. My favorite Thomas and Friends seasons would have to be season 3, season 5, and season 12. So the reason why season 3 is my favorite season, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was the first Thomas and Friends season to feature some episodes that aren't from the Railway series. You know, the stories which are written by the Audrey family. And some of those episodes were done by other writers. But I'm pretty sure that season was the first to feature some episodes that weren't written by the Audrey family. Now for season 5, it was the first season to not feature any stories that were from the Railway series at all. All those episodes were just written by uh, the crew. And uh, some of those scenes look a bit dark than normal, and others look kind of spooky in uh, some of the episodes. And I don't know why... Uh, some of those uh, scenes, uh, which uh, make those uh, episodes uh, kind of creepy, uh, I think it's because that Britt Allcraft must have been a big fan of the horror movies. And that's why we got these uh, spooky scenes in some of these episodes from that season. But overall, I still enjoy those episodes. But overall, I still enjoy those episodes. And finally, season 12, the reason why I also like that season, it's because it is the only season to feature live action and CGI. And it's kind of like a live action and CGI mashup. And so, yeah, those three seasons are my favorite Thomas and Friends seasons. Justin Frazzler and Lucas26062007 asks, What is your favorite Thomas and Friends movie? Again, this is another question that's kind of difficult to answer. As a kid, uh, I enjoyed watching Thomas and the Magic Railroad, and uh, I uh, kind of liked it, and it was alright. Also, uh, I have seen that movie in theaters when it came out, as long as I can remember. Boy, that was fun. And, uh, Calling All Engines, uh, it was kind of alright. And, uh, boy, I haven't seen The Great Discovery for a long time. It sure has been a while. Uh, I enjoyed it. But anyway, I enjoyed uh, watching that movie he, as well, uh, most of the time. But anyway, uh, I enjoyed uh, watching that movie uh, a lot. Where we see uh, Thomas uh, having a roller coaster ride uh, through uh, Morgan's mind. That would have to be uh, one of my uh, favorite scenes uh, from the movie. And... It, if I have to pick uh, a Thomas movie from uh, Nitrogen Studios, or two actually, it will have to be uh, Hero of the Rails and Misty Island Rescue. So the reason why Hero of the Rails uh, is my favorite from Nitrogen Studios, it's because, uh, you people may uh, know this, 
it was the first CGI Thomas and Friends movie. All that was done in full CGI. And it kind of brings out the characters uh, to be a bit more realistic. However, the CGI uh, tooling back then was a bit more uh, less uh, before they decided to uh, upgrade uh, a bit uh, oof for the CGI effects. If you people know what I mean. And as for Misty Island Rescue, I think it's because uh, I like the theme of it. And it's kind of a ripoff to uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean theme. And there were lots of random and wild stuff going on on Misty Island, like uh, the Shake Shake Bridge and Old Wheezy. And that's pretty much I could think of those two movies by Nitrogen Studios. And if I have to pick one from uh, ARC Productions before it got renamed, it will have to be uh, King of the Railway. I like that uh, the engines can go into uh, the castle, and I even like uh, Steven, which uh, he's based on the Stevenson rocket. Because, you know, those kinds of steam engines were the first ones ever built on Earth. And it was pretty interesting that they've decided to introduce a uh, historical engine into the series. And finally, one Thomas movie that is also my favorite, which was made by Jamfield, is Journey Beyond Sodor. I like how that Thomas goes out on a journey to the mainland, but then he gets himself uh, lost on his way to his destination, and he ends up at the steelworks, and he tries to escape. But luckily for him, he managed to get free at the end. And of course, you people may know, that this was the first Thomas and Friends feature to feature signs of body movement. Although I kind of didn't like some of the body movements that were being shown in some of the scenes, but it didn't bother me that much. But overall, if I have to pick my most favorite Thomas movies, it will have to be The Great Discovery, and King of the Railway. William 0708199 asks, Who's your favorite Thomas narrator? Um, I'm not really sure exactly. Uh, I like George Collin. His narration was something that I grew up with, and I think he did uh, a pretty fine job. And I think he did pretty well, in my opinion, narrating seasons 3 to 4, even though he also did seasons 1 to 2. And there's Michael Brandon. I enjoyed his narration also, and I think he did well, even though uh, his voice got a little bit uh, oof in the later seasons. Ringo Starr was alright, his narration was kind of good, and of course, you know, he was the first Thomas and Friends narrator, but he only did seasons 1 and 2, and uh, George Collin had also uh, re-narrated seasons 1 and 2, uh, just like I've mentioned before. Michael Angelis was uh, good, I enjoyed his narration. In a few episodes, even though he only did uh, the UK dubs, but I have enjoyed his narration from the US DVD New Friends for Thomas. I kind of feel bad for Michael Angelis because he has narrated the Thomas and Friends community for so long. 
so, so, so long. He has narrated the Thomas and Friends series the longest. Unbelievable, isn't it? Also, Alec Baldwin sounded kind of a bit pale, but he was okay, uh, I, sort of. I just don't know, how on earth did he got that job? Some people have been saying that uh, he was terrible for some reason. And there was Pierce Broston. He sounded charmful, quite calm, and uh, a bit relaxing. And I think he did an a, and I think he did an okay job as well. Even though he only did the Thomas movie, The Great Discovery, and it's kind of funny. Back then, he was even going to narrate season twelve of Thomas and Friends, and then they took him off. And for some reason, they were also going to have him narrate a few more Thomas movies. And unfortunately, that never happened. That is something that I have learned about. And there's also Mark Morgan. I think that's how you pronounce his uh, full name. He was good. And to me, he sounded kind of like uh, Michael Angelis. I'm not exactly sure why, but he sounded pretty great. And of course, uh, you people may know uh, right now at the moment, the narrator that we got is uh, Thomas the Tank Engine himself. And you see, I didn't like some of the parts of Thomas's narration in the episodes. And uh, you see, at first, I thought when they said that Thomas uh, will be narrating his own adventures while they would have uh, someone else narrate uh, the other engines' adventures. But uh, you see, in my opinion, it uh, kind of brought the series downhill and uh, hasn't been the same ever since. Nevertheless, I'm hoping that they will uh, bring back the original narrator at uh, some point. And, uh, you see, I was, uh, pretty much in preferring that uh, they would actually have, uh, uh, a, a railroad uh, person, like a conductor or driver, to narrate uh, the engine's adventures while Thomas, uh, was narrating his, uh, adventures from around the world. I have uh, mentioned uh, something like that before on my uh, community tab where uh, Thomas uh, would be uh, narrating his adventures from around the world while uh, some uh, railroad person would narrate the adventures uh, that are happening on the island of Sodor. But still, like I said, I'm hoping that they would bring back uh, the original narrator for uh, any particular reason. But overall, my most favorite narrator will have to be uh, George Collin. Because, uh, like I said, I grew up uh, with his narration. Lucas26062007 asks, Do you like season 9? Yeah, I've enjoyed uh, watching some of those episodes from that season. Even though there are also a few bad ones, like Respect for Gordon and Emily Knows Best. William 0708199 and Lincoln 01 The Tank Engine asks, What is your favorite Thomas and Friends song? Well, my favorite song will have to be Thomas You're the Leader. I also like uh, He's a Really Useful Engine. And, uh, there's also uh, Rules and Regulations and Percy's Seaside Trip. Accidents Will Happen. And, uh, the Engine Roll Call song. And I enjoy Go Go Thomas. And We Make a Team Together. And I also like Streamlining. But my most favorite Thomas song is definitely... Thomas, you're the leader. Lincoln01, the tank engine, also asked, 
Can you sing any TTTE songs for me? Well, if any of you people have been following me on SoundCloud, and you may remember that I did a cover on Thomas You're the Leader, and I also did another one on He's a Really Useful Engine, which was the Magic Railroad version, not to be confused. And I have thought about seeing some other Thomas and Friends songs for you people. Like, I can do the Engine Roll Call song and Thomas's Anthem. Any Thomas song that I can think of. If any of you people know what Thomas songs that I could sing for you, let me know in the comments. But I can definitely pick any Thomas and Friends song to sing. William 0708199 asks, Do you have any Thomas DVDs? Yes, I do. I have a whole amount of Thomas DVDs, and I've enjoyed watching every one of them. More Guy Train Lover and Hard Is Daddish Engine 22 asked, What is your favorite Thomas and Friends merchandise? Well, I suppose my favorite Thomas and Friends merchandise will have to be the Bachman trains. I just love how those I just love how those models look, all those details that they got makes them look like the real characters from the TV series. Even the Rolling Stocks look spot on. I even like the Tommy uh, Playrail uh, trains and even the classic Trackmaster trains, uh, of course. I also like the Thomas and Friends Wooden Railway range and uh, the Take and Play range. And I mean the original version of Take and Play. Back then when they had the two-way smart magnets and how stunning the train's faces looked. But mostly, the Bachman Thomas trains are the best to me. Rusty's Productions asks, What do you think of the current direction of Thomas with Big World Big Adventures? Um, I think the current direction of Thomas with Big World Big Adventures is that Thomas had always wanted to see the world and he wanted to go to these uh, new places that he has never seen before or even been to. And I think he was thinking about seeing the whole world because uh, there's a lot of places uh, that he has uh, dreamed uh, of uh, visiting. So in the movie, Big World, Big Adventures, he starts off uh, at Africa, and then he makes his way up to uh, Europe, and then back home to Sodor. Although one part that I don't like about Big World, Big Adventures, which I think must have been the laziest part, is that these British rolling stocks were seen in these other countries besides uh, in the United Kingdom, like in the USA and China. They were so lazy, those people, when they were making the movie. You guys know what I mean? Just ridiculous. But it was alright, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And that's why I think of the current direction of Thomas with Big World Big Adventures. Trainboy53 Productions asks, If you were the boss slash head of Mattel Creations, what changes would you make for the Thomas and Friends TV series? Well, if I was a part of uh, Mattel Creations, then... The changes that I could make for the Thomas and Friends TV series would be uh, giving Edward, Henry, and Toby some uh, rivet detailings on their uh, buffer beams and boilers because, you know, uh, uh, so far some of the engines have got uh, details uh, of rivets. Even though uh, Toby doesn't have a boiler, it's just built inside of him. But I would have uh, 
the rivets uh, detailing to be uh, placed on his uh, side plates. And uh, for Edward and Henry, I think uh, they deserve to have uh, a handrail to their cabs because, you know, so far some of, them, uh, of the engines that you could think of have gained handrails to their cabs. And if you remember the take and play uh, Edward or even the talking one, there was a bit of a detail where he had a handrail to his cab. So I really think uh, if the engines are now gaining handrails, Edward and Henry should gain handrails to their cabs as well. And also for Diesel, I think he also deserves to have a bit of rivet detailing on his uh, buffer beams. And I think Mavis as well. And uh, any other uh, diesel engine that I can think of. And I would also bring back the narrator to narrate uh, the adventures that take place on the island of Sodor. While Thomas uh, narrates his uh, adventures from around the world. Which I have uh, explained about earlier. And uh, I would replace Rosie's white lining with pink lining because, uh, in my opinion, Rosie would look better if she actually has pink lining instead of white lining because, you know, uh, Rosie was uh, pink before and now uh, she has been recolored into this red cherry livery. And uh, I would give uh, the turntable to uh, Tithmas Sheds to be in the same color as the doors. And I would give Vickerstown Sheds uh, a full appearance, which uh, probably I would give it a design of what it was like before or maybe uh, what it was like in the Railway series. And I would especially upgrade the junction in front of Navarrete Station to make it a bit more sensitive than it looks. So those are the kind of changes that I could think of and that I could make for the Thomas and Friends TV series. John and Al Hoyde Freyer, boy that was difficult to pronounce, asks what happens if you get the old TV show models of Thomas and Friends from the late 1900s? Uh, I don't really know what you mean. Um, are you talking about uh, the original Thomas models when they were first used in the early years? If so, uh, then uh, probably I would uh, have them put on uh, display uh, at a uh, some kind of a... Uh, Museum so that people could see what uh, these models have been used for because uh, You know uh, there have been a few uh, museums which they uh, had uh, models uh, That were used for filming productions And that's uh, sort of what I could think of uh, Of what would happen if I get those uh, TV show models uh, which were from uh, the late 1900s. But overall, uh, is this question supposed to be actually a joke of some sort? I'm not exactly sure, but uh, let me know in the comments uh, to correct me. William 0708199 asked, When was the first time you've been a fan of Thomas? Well, that was a very long time ago when I first got into the show. And ever since I have been getting into the show more back then, I've been getting some more Thomas and Friends toys and video releases. And it sure has uh, grew on me. And uh, I have to admit, I have become one of the biggest uh, Thomas fans ever. So, uh... Be proud of yourself that you're a Thomas fan. Jacob Train asked, 
who was your first Trackmaster engine? And if you mean the classic Trackmaster range and not the Trackmaster Revolution range, and for sure that you also don't mean Tomy, my first Trackmaster engine would have to be Thomas. I got him in a Trackmaster set, which was called Thomas at the Coal Station, and it was one of the first Trackmaster sets that I have ever got when Trackmaster was first new in the markets. Trackside Studios 06 asked, Which is your favorite Trackmaster push along engine? Well, you see, I'm not really a huge fan of this type of diecast Thomas range since they have replaced the Thomas Adventures line with it. I mean, I know that these uh, style of trains work with uh, Trackmaster, although it's kind of a part of it. Like, you can connect the diecast trains to the motorized uh, trains and have them be uh, pulled along by them. But overall, if I have to choose a favorite engine from this range, it will have to be James. And here's our last question of the day, which was asked by Trainboy53 Productions. Do you wish you were part of the Thomas Creator Collective? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I could do any random scenes, uh, just anything that I could do for the TCC. Like, uh, I could do a, a random crash scene, or maybe a runaway scene. I could even do a, a scene where we see uh, an engine passing through the countryside. And I could even do uh, the voice uh, of uh, a station speaker, or a passenger, or even a driver. And yeah, sometimes I wish I could be a part of the Thomas Creator Collective if there is anything that I could do for the guys who make those videos of it. And that's it for now, so thanks for listening everyone. I hope I've answered everyone's questions in this section. And stay tuned for the next part where I will be answering some more questions which are about my YouTube channel and also some behind the scenes questions. So thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.